on a former headmaster. Tonight, justice finally catches up with a prolific and sadistic paedophile. For the young boys in his care, Derek Slade's schools in Norfolk and Suffolk were nothing short of cruel prisons. For Slade, they were a paedophile's playground of his own creation. Today, 30 years on, the boys he abused and battered for his own pleasure finally saw justice as he was convicted at Ipswich Crown Court of over 50 offences against them. On two counts, he was acquitted. Tonight, we'll hear from some of those who suffered appalling abuse at his hands. But first, let's go straight to the court and Natalie Gray. Natalie, what exactly happened in court today? Well, after three and a half hours of deliberation, the jury found Slade guilty of 13 charges of assault, indecent assault and serious sexual assault on 12 boys, one as young as eight. They already knew that he pleaded guilty to 15 similar charges, but what they didn't know was that he'd also admitted 16 further charges of possessing indecent images, 5,000 nearly, making indecent images, not to mention having a false passport. Be in no doubt, this was a reign of terror, a headmaster who used a cane, a slipper and a bat for beating. This is Derek Slade, now an old man. But 30 years ago, to the boys in his care, he was a monster who beat them and subjected them to sadistic sexual abuse. None of his victims were in court to see Slade convicted, so it was left to the police to speak for them. He stole our childhood. What should have been the happiest years of our lives were turned into the most fearful. Our time at St George's will never be forgotten. The process of giving evidence has been extremely traumatic, not only for us, but also our families, and a great weight has begun to lift as a result of this trial. Nick Cotton was one of the young teachers and remembers Slade as highly volatile with the boys. He was one of the first to raise concerns about him. My impression of Slade was a very disturbed and repressed and abnormal character. Derek Slade's teaching career in Norfolk began at Duncan Hall School at Scrapby. Two years later, he then set up St George's School in Wicklewood. In 1980, when the school expanded, he moved it to Great Sinbra. In 1983, the Department of Education inspected the school after complaints in a BBC programme. But the inspection concluded, the atmosphere in the school seems generally happy, and the boys are well cared for, in spite of some excessive concern for the minutiae of the rules. After resigning from St George's, he then sets up another school called Dales Down in Sussex. So how did Slade get away with it? I think it's very hard to realise the full extent of certainly sexual behaviour of this kind because paedophiles are extremely good at covering up their tracks. And, and clearly, um, Derry Slade was engaged in some very devious behaviour. Slade later moved to India and set up a school for boys, many of them orphans. As the trial's gone on, more complaints have come in about Slade and his sordid past, and police fear that what they've uncovered could just be the tip of the iceberg. Well, today, Judge Peter Fenn thanked the jury and adjourned sentencing until Monday. And that sentencing will be something the abused boys, now middle-aged men, will be watching closely. Malcolm Robertson has their story. Derek Slade seemed to have all the right credentials. Oxford educated, he was young and progressive. But beneath this veneer of respectability was a highly dangerous man, a self-confessed paedophile who preyed on young boys at the school he ran first in Norfolk and then in Suffolk. I believe in corporal punishment. I think it has a place in this school. The majority of those who attended St George's were the sons of military personnel. For many of them, their school days were horrific. Every single one of us went to that school. 98% of us were beaten by Derek Slade. He was literally terrified constantly. You know, you couldn't do anything, you couldn't speak out of turn without getting whacked. This is where Derek Slade founded St George's School in January 1978. It's since been converted to houses. Initially, there were 15 to 20 pupils, rising to more than 200. In 1980, he transferred the school to Great Finborough in Suffolk, but little else changed. Slade's reign of terror continued, physically and sexually abusing boys. And if they wrote to their parents, complaining about what they were being subjected to, he simply tore up the letters. 
Some of the boys he abused have spoken about their ordeal. For one, it began on his first day, within an hour and a half of being dropped off by his parents. His comments have been revoiced by another person. I went from a quiet, happy home to a place where you did exactly as you were told or you were stripped and beaten. You learned to obey the rules at Wickerwood very quickly. In 1982, amid allegations of brutality at St George's, Derek Slade invited us into the school at Great Finborough and defended his brutal regime. I believe in corporal punishment. It's not excessive. It's not immensely frequent, as I know has been suggested. But yes, I believe in corporal punishment. I think it has a place in this school. I don't necessarily say it has a place in all schools. Slade introduced the system of stars and stripes. A star earned a reward, a few stripes, and you got a beating. As one boy discovered to his cost when he was caught sliding down the banisters of the school's spiral staircase. I was immediately taken into his study and a whack with a bat after being told to take my trousers down and bend over. Another boy's crime was simply to ask a question in class. He was also dragged to the headmaster's study and beaten. I walked in and um, was told to take my trousers and pants down and bend over. I was there for quite a while before like anything happened so I just glanced round and he was just stood there like with cane in his hand just looking at me all red faced and told me to shout at me to look forward and then I just felt this like, immense pain as he started whacking me and he gave me six of the cane which was excruciating he said right pull your trousers up <laughs> so I, I got dressed and went to walk out and he said um, you forgot something boy and I turned around and said oh, I'm sorry sir he went no say thank you amazingly Slade never considered his behaviour might be regarded as completely unacceptable and shocking is it true that you have ordered boys to write essays entitled whackings I've had we have used that as an essay title um, I'm astonished that uh, that seems to be a cause for concern. It's, it just never had occurred to me that it could be. Derek Slade would also host midnight feasts in the school grounds to which he would invite friends and pupils and then subject the boys to horrific sexual assaults. I can remember being chosen and going off with one of these men being given something to drink. And then I've got no memory of what happened then. For boys whose childhoods were destroyed, it's taken immense courage to confront such appalling memories. Many others will have suffered at the hands of Derek Slade. For them all, there's an overwhelming sense of relief that it's likely to be a long time before he's released. I'm not here just for me. This is just for the other kids that have been through this. But it's about time this came out, especially with the parents and the kids that aren't here anymore. Well, luckily, as we've seen, it's taken a lot of courage for those men to speak out against Slade. Yes, they've been incredibly brave, and we can only imagine how lonely and miserable their childhoods must have been. But actually, it's impacted on their whole lives. Uh, some of them have been telling us they've had problems with trust, problems with authority, some have been driven to drink and drugs, and I guess we can only hope that Monday's sentencing will finally bring them closure. And Natalie, the implication from what we've heard tonight is that there may be more victims. Yes, indeed, police have said that a number of people have come forward claiming that Slade abused and both physically and sexually them too, and the police have promised that any new complaint will be investigated too.